Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought perhaps we have a short chat on negative thoughts and in thoughts in general. Often we have negative thoughts that bamboozles us, wastes our time, and we get worried, concerned, and we wonder, what is it? What can I do with it? Why is it there? Well, negative thoughts are there because of the suggestion that has come to your mind. And since you try to quickly come to rescue and the mind is designed to protect you and look for trouble and solve it, and when a negative thought comes in, the mind rushes in to solve it. In order to solve it, to secure you and protect you, it starts analyzing it which means it is giving the thought action. When it gives the thought action, that thought that has no reality to it suddenly becomes an actuality to you in your mind, in your thoughts. You think that it's real because you are now you added action to the thought. The negative thought was a negative thought, but you entertained it because of fear of what it is, that I have to get rid of it, I have to solve it. So you run with it, you try to bring solution to it, you try to end it by furthering its story, where it goes, what it could be, what it couldn't be, and how to solve it, how to fix it. All that action and attention that you give it suddenly turns a mere thought, a mere thought into something that is more than a thought. It has actuality which again has created in your mind, which is an illusion. But we said life is an illusion, but the illusion that you focus on is the reality. And you just turn an illusion, a thought, into reality by giving it an action. So you justified it in a way, or you gave it reality while it was just a passing breeze, and you grabbed it and gave shape to it by entertaining. You see, every thought that comes to your mind, in this case the negative thought, also, it has a pictorial, it has a picture. And every picture that you visualize has a thought behind it. So when a negative thought comes in, it has a picture. And as long as this picture is in the screen on the screen of your mind you can't <laughs> you can't bring another picture on the screen because the screen is full is busy and you can't bring two pictures at the same time with two different pictures and as long as you're continuing to fix this whatever the negative thought suggestion is that worries you, concerns you, as long as you're following the story, you have other pictorials coming to your mind because of the thoughts that you're creating to fix this thing. And when these other pictorials come in, the screen is full and is busy. It doesn't have a chance to upload another picture that is pleasant to you in order to override this thought by having overridden this picture of this negative thought that was residing on your mind or concerning you. So in order to stop the negative thought, either you got to stop entertaining it, stop solving it, stop fixing it, stop running with the story and trying to get to the end of it to bring it to a conclusion which then naturally it has not, no task anymore, nothing to do, and it dissipates, and another thought comes into your mind, which could be a better one. Or you change the picture of the negative thought that it is now running on your mind with another event, another picture. When you bring a new picture in your thought, that picture has a thought of its own, and it replaces the thought of the negative thought that has been bothering you because every thought, the negative thought, has a pictorial 
and now you change this pictorial by a new pictorial of a different event, something in your memory, and then therefore the thought of that new picture also comes to be the, the top thinking, the top picture, and then dissipates the negative thought. You see, mind is always thinking and creating images because mind wants to be secure. And in finding images, it finds security. In creating images, it finds security for himself. When it doesn't have the process of creating these images, then it, the fear comes to the picture. It becomes fearful. Because it doesn't have a place to reside, it tries to find a residence and it tries to find security in images that it creates. So you, it has a place to be. So it creates the image of a shopper when you're shopping. If you're working, it creates, you have an image of a clerk. If you're in school, you have an image of a student. If you're meeting your parents, you have an image of a son or a daughter. If you're teaching, you have an image of a teacher. If you're on a bus, you have an image of a you know, passenger. Whatever it is, there's always an image. So you're really interacting with the world, not by you, not through you, through the image that you have of you. All these images are what is interacting with the world. And through that image, his mind tries to find security, a place to be. Otherwise, it's all around. You see, everything in your body has a place to be. Your eyes, you know where they are. Nose, you know where they are. Ears, you know where they are. The fingers, wrist, elbow, you know where they are. They have a place in your body. But your entity is made out of mind and body. But mind doesn't have a place. Where is the mind's place? Thought. Where is the mind's place? It doesn't. That's why it's all over the place. Every time you want to use it, you've got to bring it back and then focus it on what you want to focus. You know? It's like it doesn't have a place to be, so it's, a, it's like a gypsy. It's everywhere. And that's why it creates images for itself to have a place, to have an identity, to be feeling secure that I am somewhere, I am, I am, I'm in existence, so I'm here in this image, in that image. Otherwise, if you could get rid of the image, then it'll be you. There'll be no fear, there'll be nothing to bother you, because the images are the ones that create fear. The images that comes because of a thought, and the thought translates into a pictorial image and that image represents whatever it is good or bad for you and some of them are the negative thoughts that affects you negatively so what you need to do is first stop trying to solve the negative thought whatever suggestion it is it makes you I don't know uh, like uh, suggest that you have a sickness or get a sickness or some unpleasant event that it comes to your mind whatever it is you need to focus on the fact that if you don't give it an action, it doesn't turn into reality. When you start solving it, it's like you're giving it an action. Because thought by itself, it's non-existence. It's an illusion. It's stupid. It has no actuality. But when you give it action by, by trying to investigate it, search it, especially negative thoughts, that action of searching and entertaining it gives it a substance, as if it's real, it's something to, to tangle with. So when you don't try to solve it, there is no action that you have given to the thought that has appeared, regardless of what pictorial that has come with this thought, when there is no action given to it, meaning giving a story, entertaining it, to run with it, try to solve it, try to see why it, it'll be this, it'll be that, then what if it's this, what if it's that, I'll do this to fix it, I'll do this to get rid of it. All these 
have given it now life. So when you stop solving it, it will have no existence in the Im imaginary sense that we just talked about. And it just pff, dissipates. And the next thought comes in and takes its place. And so on and so forth until it's the right thought. And then we give that a certain attention and action to keep it. But that is basically the job of a mind because mind is always trying to protect us and keep us safe. So it looks for trouble. And when it looks for trouble and finds something like a neg negative thought or whatnot, it tries to solve it. Once it tries to solve it, it's giving it action. When it gives it action, it feels like if it's in actuality. Then we get really concerned about it. But if you don't give it an action, don't try to solve it, it will have no existence in its own understanding and it dissipates. Or if you replace it with another pictorial of another event that you like it or you want to be occupied with, then it replaces the negative thought because there was no action there, but there's action here. And the pictorial and the action brings new thoughts on this new picture and then you will move on. So the idea is to understand that mind seeks refuge and security in images. And movement of mind is time. Why? Because mind needs to, see, to look for images because it wants to seek security, it has a place to be. Where does it go to find those images? It goes into the memory. Memory is the past. And now the mind is in the past, so therefore it's time, created time. Or it tries to conjure up something future. It hasn't happened yet. It's not the now. And it figures what if. And that what if that doesn't exist as an image, creates an image for it. But that also, that image is in the future that is not now, which is again time created. So mind is either in the memory, the past, or conjure up something for the future. It's all traveling between creating time. Its movements are in time. And these movements, it travels through these. In order to create these images, it moves through time. It moves through the memory and conjure up something, which is time. So movement of mind is time. And the reason that it does all these movements, because it doesn't have a place like the finger, like the eyes, like the ears, like the nose, like the teeth. We know where everything is in our body, but the mind. But the mind has to have a place as well in the body so it can be coordinated and the mind and body would be at the same place in the same time and space and then we will manifest our total power and ability to be whole, not mind separate from the body. So if you can give the mind a place like everything else in your body has, the chances of negative thought coming would be much less because it's not wandering all around and trying to find the images to keep us safe and therefore stumbles on negative thoughts as well because negative thoughts are all over it. In the collective consciousness of the universe, negative thoughts are there and we being receiver, we receive these things and then suddenly if it's something of a negative suggestion or negative pictorial, we get worried about it, we try to solve it and which it creates and all that. And mind tries to constantly create these images and solving and this, busy with these things because it finds security in the images. But when we give it a place to be, then you wouldn't have to look for images and you wouldn't have to be traveling in the memory, the consciousness or conjuring up in the future to find images, to find things to be busy, to feel secure. And I have explained in one of my books, Me, My Psyche and I, where the mind resides in the body. And it's a very elaborate discussion, which perhaps if you have uh, acquired mind, uh, uh, Me, My Psyche and I book, which is in the form of the ebook, very inexpensive, you can get it from my site, uh, mindthatseekstruth.com. And you will have this long chapter about uh, mm, mind must have a home uh, 
and the mind usually most people's mind don't have a home they're all over the place so I've discussed that there and that can be very helpful to know uh, the movement and how to harness this the wild movement of the mind which causes us lots of worry and trouble and waste our time and imagination so perhaps this is something for you to think about and figure out how to deal with these negative thoughts and in case you have more questions about transient thoughts or negative thoughts you can um, get my ebook that is called transient thoughts and me and that's elaborate discussions on the negative thoughts and how to deal with them what they are and so on and many other uh, descriptions to deliver the points for you to ponder on hope that was something for you to enjoy and i'll talk to you on other issues soon